your Gradle project can easily be set up to run integration tests using a separate Gradle task and source directory. This separates the integration tests from unit tests, making the project easy to understand and helping developers to work more productively. In this video, you'll learn the simplest way to run the integration tests in your Gradle project by adding just a few lines of code to your build script. So, let's get right into it. Integration tests are just one part of an overall testing strategy. Depending on who you ask, the term integration test might mean something completely different. To the developer of a monolith application, they might say that integration tests verify that multiple classes or modules work together as expected, whereas to the developer of a microservice, they might say integration tests verify that independently deployed services work together properly. Thankfully, you and your team are free to choose your own definition. But whatever you decide, can we at least agree that integration tests are different from unit tests? Unit tests verify the functionality of a specific class independently. And being able to run integration tests separately from unit tests has several advantages, which we'll explore later in the video. But first, how can we set all of this up in Gradle? Well, the Gradle documentation already has a very good explanation of how to configure integration tests in a project from scratch, using only the Gradle APIs and no additional plugins. This involves, first off, creating a source set for the integration tests. This is a separate directory in which to put the integration test classes and resources. Setting up dependencies for the source sets so that, for example, in your integration tests, you have access the same dependencies as the main production code, configuring the compilation and runtime class path for the source set to include the production code you want to test. Yes, it's always useful to be able to access the thing you want to test after all. And creating an integration test task, which lets you run the integration tests on their own from the command line. And that sounds like a lot of work, right? That's why my preference is to use a plugin to set all of this up automatically. Now I'm going to run through two different plugins that achieve these outcomes really easily. And which plugin you pick much depends on which Gradle version you're using. So the first plugin I'm going to run through is a third party plugin. And if you're using Gradle versions up to 7.2, I recommend this one. If you're using the very latest version of Gradle at the moment, which is 7.3, then this actually includes a new plugin added by Gradle themselves. It's a core plugin, and you want to use that plugin instead. So let's run through these two plugins and you can see how they work. And the Gradle Test Sets plugin does just this, letting you configure all these steps with just a few lines of code. So what you have to do first is apply the plugin in your Gradle project, and this is how to do it using the Gradle Groovy DSL. And the plugin lets you name your group of tests however you want. For example, you could have integration tests, performance tests, or even end-to-end -end tests. We'll stick with integration tests though, so we need to configure the plugin like this. With just these three lines of code, you get the following goodies in your Gradle project. A source set called integration test, ready for you to add classes under source slash integration test slash Java, or resources under source slash integration test slash resources. And two new dependency configurations, integration test implementation and integration test runtime only, so that you can add integration test specific dependencies. For example, if you're using a particular framework for integration testing, such as Wiremock, you can add it here. And you get a test task called integration test for actually running those tests. So of course, now when you run dot slash Gradle W space integration test, it runs those integration tests. And don't forget you can use the abbreviated task name of IT, so you can run dot slash Gradle W space IT, and that does the same thing. And you can still run the unit tests with dot slash Gradle W space test, or dot slash Gradle W space check. Note that the check task won't run the integration tests unless you specifically set up a 
task dependency to do that. So this is how you do that by locating the check task and then passing the integration test task to depends on. And this is a good idea to make sure the integration tests aren't forgotten. Since the build task depends on check, you can configure your continuous integration server to run dot slash greater w space build and know your integration tests will always be run. Gradle have now plugged the gap with their own plugin to achieve the same outcome, called the JVM Test Suite plugin. If you're using Gradle 7.3 Plus, then I recommend this plugin over the Test Sets plugin, as it will likely become the standard for setting up integration tests. The plugin gets applied automatically when the Java plugin is applied, so in our example, we just need to configure it. This involves configuring whatever test suites we need, in our case, for integration tests. This configuration creates an integration test source set, integration test dependency configurations, and an integration test task. And like before, we can ensure the integration tests run whenever the check task runs. One nice thing this plugin does that the test sets plugin doesn't do is to automatically add the relevant JUnit Jupyter dependencies on the integration test runtime and compile class paths. If you want to use JUnit 4 instead, just call use JUnit within your test suite closure. And the first advantage you're going to get from this kind of setup is fast feedback because Integration tests are often slower than unit tests, especially when you include layers like the network and database. Being able to run the unit tests alone means you can more frequently run them during development to ensure you're not breaking functionality as you go. You might choose to run the integration tests less frequently, perhaps before pushing code changes. And secondly here, it gives you a cleaner code base because using convention to distinguish unit tests from integration tests helps developers understand what context they're working in. And one simple way to do this is by just naming the tests differently, for example, adding the word integration test to any integration test. But probably better still is to use the approach that we've just seen, which not only provides strong separation, but also offers the ability to treat the sources differently, for example, declaring a specific integration test only dependencies. And using a separate source directory for integration and unit tests paves the way for other types of tests you might want to add in the same way. For example, performance tests, end-to-end -end tests, or contract tests. And what types of tests you add depends on your application, but one approach that people sometimes use is the test pyramid, with a few end-to-end -end tests stacked on more integration tests on top of more unit tests. And it doesn't always help to try to fit a square peg into a round hole. So there are now other approaches that might work better for front-end applications or microservice architectures like Spotify's Test Honeycomb. And I'll provide a link in the description with more information. Hopefully you can see that adding integration tests into a greater project is already a well-documented process but using the test sets or JVM test suite plugins makes the process even easier. So consider applying these plugins to your own project to simplify writing and running integration tests. Finally, if you want to learn more about the Gradle fundamentals, then I invite you to take part in my free course, Get Going with Gradle. It's the fastest way to a working knowledge of Gradle where you'll feel confident working with simple Gradle projects. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.